All right, let's talk about Trump. So, obviously, there are impeachment hearings in the House of Representatives. Um, whoops, I closed something. I didn't want to close. One second. Uh, over this whole uh, Ukraine issue. And I think a lot of people are confused. The, it looks like he still has a, a massive number of uh, supporters uh, among Republicans. It looks like 90% of Republicans opposed impeachment. What is the standard for impeachment? If the president engages in knowing violation of federal law, then that is an impeachable offense. If the president engages in knowing violations of the law, it's an impeachable offense. Now, let's be clear. Right? For anyone running for office, it is illegal, illegal for any person to solicit, accept, or receive anything of value from a foreign national in connection with the U.S. election. Now, this is not a new idea. The founders talked about this. They did not want foreign intervention in our elections. It is not a complicated idea. This is the very definition of what it would mean for high crimes. To use your office to go to a foreign government to investigate your opposition and to make it conditional your support for that foreign government. Now, I don't think we should be supporting these foreign governments anyway, but given that we are, and it's the law that we should, and Congress passed a law, passed a bill allocating certain mon money to Ukraine, and then the president's saying, we won't give you the money unless you investigate my political rival. I mean, it doesn't get much clearer than that in terms of what is an offense that should be impeachable. I mean, Trump has violated the law. And he's violated the law in the crudest, most obscene way. And he's violated election laws where he is responsible for upholding the Constitution and our election laws in this country. As Andrew Napolitano, Fox News, Andrew Napolitano used to have me on his shows regularly when he had a show on Fox. He writes, for heaven's sake, Trump was just investigated by Mueller for two and a half tumultuous years for allegedly bringing the Russian government into the 2016 election. So he knew that this is illegal because somebody was investigating him. And put aside what Mueller found, but he, 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 Napolitano goes on and says, and now he has attempted in one phone call to bring the Ukrainian government into the 2020 elections. I mean, really? That is, that is truly insane. I mean, think of the judgment of a person who does that? Who knows it's against the law? Who knows that this is an issue because he's just being investigated around that issue for two and a half years and then does it anyway and doesn't care because not only does he, in a phone call, clearly tell the Ukrainian leader that he should be investigating Biden. And look, I'm sure Biden is corrupt. But so is so a lot of people. I mean, if the call had said, please investigate American corruption in Ukraine, fine. Nobody would have made a big deal out of it. But it's not just the call. It's all these people now surrounding him. All these texts and emails that are reinforcing the idea that clearly, unequivocally, not only did Trump urge the Ukrainians to investigate Biden, but he actually made military support 
which is supposed to be in America's self-interest, otherwise why do it, contingent on the investigation. I mean, it is so obvious that this is impeachable. And unfortunately, the only Republican in the Senate who seems to think so is Mitt Romney. It would be nice if people like uh, Sass and some of the other so-called constitutionalists also stood up for the Constitution. For the Constitution. Here's what his... Um, Here's what ambassador to the European Union texted. He was texting with the former Ukrainian ambassador. Most important is for Zelensky, that's the president of Ukraine, to say he will help investigation. Heard from White House, assuming President Z convinces Trump he will investigate, get to the bottom of what happened in 2016, he will nail down date for visit in Washington. So he wasn't going to get a visit unless he agreed to investigate. I think it's crazy, and this is the key, I think it's crazy to withhold security assistance for help with the political campaign. Everybody knows this is what he was doing. Everybody. This is his own ambassador. This is a guy he appointed. This is a guy who owes Trump. But this is the text he's sending. July 21. Bill Taylor, former ambassador, writes, Gordon, one thing Kurt and I talked about yesterday was the point that President Zelensky is sensitive to Ukraine being taken seriously, not merely as an instrument in Washington, domestic re-election politics. Everybody knew that Donald Trump was using Ukraine as an instrument for his own re-election. These texts are not open to interpretation. What Trump's own, own, Chief of Staff said the other day is not open to interpretation. I mean, the nuttiness of people trying to excuse Trump for this, of all things. I mean, you people have really been lobotomized. You don't have a brain anymore. You can't think for yourself. There's no open to interpretation. These texts are clear that the whole chain of command, the whole chain of command, was instructed by Trump. Clearly. Clearly. To link the investigation with the assistance. And while on the call there was no quid pro quo, there clearly was. Mulvaney said it just the other day. Then he walked it back, but he said it. Because it's true. Because everybody knows it's true. Because everybody in the chain of command through Ukraine knows it's true. Only, the only people who don't know it's true because they evade, which they've been evading throughout all of Trump's presidency. They ignore all the nonsense he's done. Are the people who support Trump blindly, who refuse to accept the fact that we have in the White House a president who has zero, nada, no respect for the rule of law, no respect for the Constitution, no respect for the separation of powers. A president that is such a narcissist that he doesn't even care if he gets caught because he believes, truly, that it doesn't matter what he does. His supporters will support him no matter what because he's doing it for a good cause. And what is the good cause that so many of you believe in, that so many of you think justifies lying, cheating, stealing, anything? Defeating the left. Anything goes. If we can defeat Nancy Pelosi, or defeat Hillary Clinton, or defeat Biden, anything goes. The rule of law, the Constitution, if we have to suspend them for a while, as long as we defeat the left, anything goes. And while you won't even admit it to yourself, that is exactly what you have bought into. Because this stuff is not up to inter interpretation. This stuff is not... I mean, yes, the transcript of the call, if you wanted to be generous to Trump, could be interpreted otherwise. But since then, there have been massive amounts of evidence, these texts that I read you, that clearly indicate a connection. 
But what the hell? We're going to defeat the left. So it doesn't matter. Now, I've been saying this since he got elected. That your emphasis on defeating the left is going to bring out the policies that you supposedly reject are going to be instituted by the right because there's no difference between them. They hate you. They hate the individual. They want to impose on you. This state. And of course, Trump admits it. Right? He says, and he said in public, China should start investigating the Bidens. He didn't say China should start investigating corruption by Americans. The Bidens. And there's an even implied threat. I don't think President Xi likes being under that kind of scrutiny. What scrutiny? Scrutiny that he's going to impose on him? I mean, look. I've said that the most depressing thing about the Trump presidency is the fact that some of you, and some of you I mean the millions of people out there, will apologize, will justify, will excuse anything this guy does, anything he does, no matter how outrageous. Why? Because he's not the left. But you, don't, you can't even say because he's not the left, because you won't even allow anything to enter into your mind that might question whether this guy should be president. Now, to me, it's obvious he should have never been president. And now, it is so obvious he should not be president. He is such a narcissist. And it's so pathological that reality doesn't matter to this man. He has no idea of the rule of law. He does not care about the rule of law. He doesn't understand the concept of the rule of law. His entire career as a businessman and here has been about circumventing the rule of law. They've been about him trying to avoid it, pay it off, break it, and you hire lawyers then to sort it all out, which is exactly what he's doing right now. And of course, he's brought into the White House one of the great scumbags of political history, Rudy Giuliani, one of the most despicable people who've been in public life, in American public life, ever. And of course, now Rudy Giuliani's associates have been caught at the airport, arrested in an airport, with one-way tickets to Vienna, accused of taking money from foreigners in, in, in applying it to elections in the United States, but also other charges associated with corruption in the Ukraine. Do we really want the Ukrainians to investigate American corruption? Do we really want Ukrainians and Chinese to look into corruptions by Americans? Maybe the Russians can do the same. Do you really think this is going to be Democrats falling? Or do you think it's going to be Democrats and Republicans falling like flies? I mean, an attempt to get a foreign power, Ukraine, China, whatever, Russia, to intervene in an internal election process is without question an impeachable offense. Our founding fathers would be horrified by this. Trump doesn't care. He doesn't care. But the key here, and this is what I said years ago, what Trump is doing is making for Republicans. We know this has been true for Democrats. He's making the Constitution irrelevant. For Republicans, he's making the rule of law irrelevant. He is destroying the integrity of this republic. I mean, other presidents have violated the Constitution all the time and probably been engaged in corruption and so on. But they were embarrassed by it. They tried to hide it. 
You know, trying to hide something means that you at least understand that it's wrong. Or you at least understand that there's a rule of law that's going to apply to you. But Trump doesn't hide it. Because he doesn't believe the rule of law applies to him. He doesn't believe he should be judged by anybody. He believes he is above the law. And that attitude by President of the United States we have never seen before. Never seen before. By the way, people forget, but during the campaign, before 2016, Trump, in a press conference, actually called on the Russians to look into Hillary Clinton's emails. So he was urging them, even then, to intervene in the election. In that case, the Russians. And that should have been enough. What he said about Russia during the campaign should have been enough never to have gotten him elected. How? Republicans in the primaries allowed this guy to be elected is unbelievable. Ken says, how has Obamacare passed if we've never seen it before? Well, because they, they didn't read it, but they don't read any of the laws that they pass. Obamacare was not unusual. If you ever see the laws, they're this thick, they're massively thick, and nobody reads them. And usually they're empty of content. And much of what's in there is left for later interpretation and later regulatory, the regulators to figure out. But this idea that Obamacare was somehow unusual because they didn't read it is complete and utter nonsense. They don't read any of the bills. Yeah, I mean, Nancy Pelosi at the time said, you know what's going to be in the law after you pass it. You have to pass it, then you'll find out what's in the law. But that's every day. Republicans, Democrats, it doesn't matter. How many people have read Dodd-Frank? How many people under Bush read Sarbanes-Oxley? I bet you not one senator, 98 to 0 that bill passed. Not one senator read the bill. I mean, our political process is completely and utterly broken, utterly broken. And what Donald Trump is doing is he's putting nails in the coffin He's destroying this country because he's destroying the soul of this country. He's destroying the very idea of the rule of law. He's destroying the idea that one, if one cheats, one should at least be embarrassed by cheating. And I don't know how you overcome that. And I don't know how a Republican Party, which I think is, I think this is going to destroy the Republican Party forever. I don't see how a Republican Party can recover from supporting Donald Trump. Now, if they turn on him, if they turn on him, but there's no sign they are, then there's hope for the party. But if they support him through this and through everything else he does, through what he did in Syria and through everything else, through the way he makes decisions, then forget it. The party is dead and they basically handed it, what Trump and his supporters have done, handed this country on a silver platter to the nutty left, to Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren is going to be, you know, we are risking the possibility of Elizabeth Warren being president. And, and the fault of that will be with you. You who support Trump blindly. All right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. using the super chat and i noticed yesterday when i appealed for uh, support for the show many of you stepped forward and actually uh supported the show for the first time so i'll do it again maybe we'll get some more today um if you like what you're hearing if you appreciate what i'm doing then i appreciate your support uh those of you who don't yet support the show please take this opportunity go to yaronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com yaronbrookshow 
and um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.